Guys, what is going on? Welcome to today's episode of the Seven Figures Club podcast. Today we have an amazing guest for you. We've got uh, Spencer Snakerd. And as you guys know, the goal of this podcast is to give you the tools, the strategies, and the mindset to join that Seven Figures Club, to you know build net worth, to build a business, and to get in the top 5% of business owners who actually you know generate over seven figures a year in sales. 95% of those do not. I believe today's guest is going to be a powerful um, you know, person to give you the strategies, to give you the mindset, because a lot of this is mindset so that you can get into that club. Now, Spencer is an executive transformation coach, trainer, and speaker. She helps, in, she helps visionary entrepreneurs and conscious women leaders uh, to break through invisible barriers to get to the next level of impact and success by transforming from the inside out so that you can turn your mission into a world-changing movement without life-sucking consequences. I like that. I'm guessing that's probably why she's going on vacation for the next two months because she's got a lot of that mastered and put together. And it's also not just about achieving more compliment, accomplishments through uh, though you can do loads of that too, but it's also about living with freedom. It's about living with joy in full alignment with who you really are and what you're here for, what matters most in every aspect of life. Fulfillment is what we're all after, no question about it. Healing old wounds, releasing old patterns, stepping forward. I'm sure we're going to talk about limiting beliefs. And then after help, having helped hundreds of ambitious men and women create job dropping results in all areas of their life, let me give you a few examples of those. She's helped people grow revenue 10 times, 10x in the last two years, uh, drop multiple dress sizes, get in the best shape of their life, increase income at least 300%, uh, restore 20 plus year old broken relationships, create the marriage of their dreams. In essence, she's gonna help you with your health, wealth, and your relationships. And that really encompasses a lot of life. Spencer, welcome to the podcast. There are over 32 million businesses in the US and over 90% of them will never break seven figures in annual sales. So how do we as entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs break into that seven figures club? This podcast will relentlessly share the secrets, strategies, and tactics I've used to create three multi seven figures businesses and bring in even more successful entrepreneurs than me to share their inspirational stories and tactics to success. You can create your dream business in life right now. So buckle up and let's go. Thanks so much for having me here, Leo. Yeah, boy, I hear some of those results. And I think if I didn't know better myself, I think they sound bogus, but they're legit. <laughs> <laughs> that that they are no some amazing results and and we certainly are excited to talk about those today now we always like to find out a little bit more about your background and what led you specifically down the path of entrepreneurship and and helping you know other entrepreneurs what was your upbringing like what were some of those events that maybe led you down a path of entrepreneurship or key moments uh, early on in life yeah, you know, it's funny, as soon as you were saying that, I was envisioning, I was remembering going around my neighborhood, knocking door to door, asking neighbors if I could wash their car for them and things like that. Oh, I love it. I, <laughs> yeah, I always, I, I think I just kind of always had some degree of an entrepreneurial spirit and thinking, you know, if you want to make something happen, go out there and do it and make it happen. And um, I actually, I went to college uh, for a degree in psychology, but knew as I was going through my psych program that I was like, I really don't want to work with people with mental problems per se. I want to really help people live the best life that they can live and not be stopped by anything and be able to make their dreams reality. And that's all that good stuff. That's and nice. um, so I was very fortunate about a year or so after college, I discovered a transformational training company was introduced to it from a friend um, that was doing life coaching. And, you know, this was before coaching even was a thing. This was like the early to mid nineties and, yeah, um, yeah. and just was like watching miracles happen in the room. I mean, things that I, you know, even for me, like I, I had had eating disorders for over 10 years of my life and was at a point where I wasn't actively abusing myself, but felt like I'm always going to have this monkey on my back, so to speak, and always have this problem to deal with. And literally one conversation in that weekend training just completely broke free of it. I was like, yeah, I don't need that anymore. I'm done with that. And just things like that, that you'd think you need like years of therapy to work through just like magic were happening for people. And I was like, this is it. This is what I was put on this earth to do. And so that's certainly what started me down the coaching and transformation path. And then the natural extension of that seemed to be to, to do it in a way that works for me and the life I want to be living and all of that as an entrepreneur. 
Absolutely. Well, and then you transitioned uh, further into not only becoming a great entrepreneur yourself, but then also helping other small business owners. A lot of yes. the listeners here are in, you know, early startup stage with their business. They're, they're trying to take it to that next level. And I know there's kind of three pillars, you know, that you talk about that really help an entrepreneur or a leader to succeed. And, and these are three pillars they really need to master. You know, what are those three pillars and how can we, you know, work towards progressing with them? Yeah, absolutely. The the three pillars of my my work are alignment, insight, and reinvention, and and they're really um, coming from I most my work is very much sort of guided or informed by the quote from the French philosopher that says we're spiritual beings having a human experience. Um, and it, it, the the more I've gone into this work and the more I've worked with people over the years, the more I see that I think it can really kind of be broken down to who we are as spiritual beings. And for me, this doesn't have to do with religion or doctrine or anything like that. It's just this idea of you know, we can't cut your physical body open and say, oh, there's your personality or there's who you are. There's some sort of existence to us beyond our physical cellular nature. So, so on a, on a spiritual level, that's very much, I think where there, we have these callings of, you know, who we are wanting to be expressed in the world, what we're here for, our purpose, our mission, our, um, you know, what, what we feel we're here to create and contribute and what really matters most to us. And when we can get those in alignment, um, that's when I feel like we really have the power to create anything. However, in the way of that alignment <laughs> is aspects of our humanity in these physical bodies. We're housed in these bruisable, breakable, you know, end date dated bodies. Um, and with that comes fear and comes a need to survive. And with that innate need to survive, we're ultimately just cavemen still at heart um, or on a kind of on a cellular level. We're all just like, you know, making, trying to make sure we don't get dragged off by the saber toothed tiger to have us for dinner. And so with that comes fear. And that's where things like ego and identity and fear and doubt and imposter syndrome and all those things tend to get in the way. So, um, so alignment with who you really are, what you're here for, what matters most insight into the parts of your humanity that can get in the way of that alignment. And then reinvention is really being able to, um, kind of strip away all that's not you, all the the armor that we carry around or the baggage we carry around or the um, limiting beliefs and things that we carry around, mm, being able to really yeah. kind of strip ourselves free of that to show up fully as our, in our full self-expression throughout our whole human experience, like meshing those two parts together. Absolutely. So, so three powerful p pillars that you just broke down, unpacked for us. And, and a lot of those do kind of come back into one word that, that I see a lot on your website. I think a lot about it daily in, you know, the business and, and our team here in the office uh, and, and with those that we, you know, try to reach out to and connect with on the podcast and it's mindset. And there's, there's this, you know, what, how would you define mindset and, and what are some of the keys to creating the right mindset? Something else you talk about on your web, on, on your work is, is avoiding life sucking consequences. And <laughs> yes. as an entrepreneur in 20 years, I can tell you, I've gone through some of those life sucking consequences, but talk to us a little bit about, uh, you know, the right types of mindset and things we can do with our mindset. So we avoid life sucking consequences because those are so easy you know, to create as an entrepreneur's business owner. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the part where mindset plays into that very much is that like, we know we're going to get those life sucking consequences if certain things happen or we approach things certain ways. And so um, a lot of times to try to save us from ourselves, we will avoid things or play small or not take the risks or make the leaps that we know we need to make to get to where we want to be because we're afraid of those life sucking consequences and we're trying to avoid them. So let's start with your first question. You said, you know, what is mindset to me or how do I define that? To me, I think of mindset as really how you, how you you see the world and yourself and your place in the world. It's, it's like the view, it's like the lens you, ex you experience life through. And I think of this, like if, you know, if I was going around with a pair of, of blue tinted glasses, the world would appear blue to me. Or if I looked at something yellow, I would actually think it's green because blue and yellow make green. So my lens is really creating my experience and my view of reality. Um, and we often think that, you know, well, if I think it, or if I feel it, or if I see it, or if I believe it, then it's true. And that's the way it is, which is, you know, why we have 
been at war for thousands of years in parts of the world and have the, the right and the left fighting each other. I'm right. No, I'm right. The whole thing. So all that ties in too, but the, tying it into business, again, our view of reality and of what's possible and um, all of it really is, is sort of filtered through the lens that we look through. And so that lens is your mindset. So, um, so, and, and really with mindset, you know, I think a lot of times people will think of it as, oh, well, just think happy thoughts or just think positively or do some visualizations or tell yourself some affirmations. I'm not opposed to those things. I feel sometimes when I say it that way, like I'm making fun of it and I'm really not making fun of it because I think there is value to it, but in and of itself is not going to get the job done. We need to really be able to understand what's going on underneath the surface that's driving us because you're the thoughts you think that then become your beliefs and your reality are really creating creating the possibilities you see or don't see, the actions you take or may not be taking, um, and ultimately the results you produce or may not be producing to the level you want to be producing them. Um, and I've got, I have a story I could share of a client actually who came to me with a very yeah, like relatable, yeah, I think story. example. Yeah. So, so a woman came to me, she'd been in business, I think for almost eight, I think eight years, she'd been kind of hammering away at it, um, trying to build her business. She had just gotten to a point where she was hitting $10,000 a month. So about 120,000 a year. And she said, you know, I definitely want to make more. She said, but maybe like 20 or 30,000 a month. I'm not one of those people that wants to make a million dollars, which I thought was very intriguing and a perfect story for this podcast in particular. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I said, look, I'm not saying you should want to make a million dollars, but I'm really curious why you specifically don't want to make a million dollars. So with her permission, we went in to explore that a little more. And it became pretty apparent from that first conversation that she... Um, I, you know, I said at one point in that first conversation, like, you know, it seems like you've kind of got this either or like either you can have a really successful business that makes a lot of money and gives you the freedom and independence and fun to travel the world and do the things you want to do. Or you can have a relationship, the relationship that you want, but, but you can't have the business and all the other good stuff that you think comes with that. And she was like, well, yeah, <laughs> you know, as I called it out, she didn't know that consciously when she came to me, but when I called out, she's like, well, yeah, now that I think of it, she said, I've only known two families my whole life who really seemed happy, like happily married and happy as a, a family and everything and everything. And she said, and they hardly had any money. And my friends in those families could never do anything. They couldn't go to the movies or go on trips or different things because they just weren't able to afford it ever. She said, and then the people that were really successful and did have money and could do fun things like my family and others, she said, you know, my parents were multiple times divorced or other people that I knew that were maybe still married, but miserable in the relationship. She's like, it seemed like you can't have success and love. And so for her, both areas of her life were mediocre, maybe. Be. Like she was kind of just doing enough to be okay, but really because she was a very high achieving person and had visions of great things for both of those areas, she felt like she was failing at both. And she was feeling like, what is wrong with me? And why is this not happening? And why am I not there yet? And all of this. And so as we started to kind of work through this, she even came back the second session to me and she said, you know, it's the craziest thing. I was on a plane this weekend and I saw all these really seemingly happy and love couples in business class. She's like, and if they're in business class, they must have money. And I've never even seen that before, <laughs> like that people could actually be happy and have money. And, um, and so as we really started to explore more, like, is this true? Is this reality? And what else could be possible? And what do you want to create for your life with this? Um, you know, she started to see things different ways. She started to take new risks. She started to invest more in her business because really by not wanting to make a million dollars, which, you know, I want to clarify for your audience. Some of you might be like, well, that's stupid. The whole reason I'm listening here is because of course I want to make a million dollars. So your thing may not be her thing. You might not have the same specific fears or limits that she had. But the point here is we all have some kind of limit. And for her, that limit was keeping her from making, she, it was like she was putting the brakes on her business because she didn't want it to get too good. Because if it got too good, she would have life-sucking consequences in other places. And so, um, you know, she started to then say, hmm, well, maybe I do want to take more risks and I do want to push this further and see what I can do with the business. She started started investing in Facebook ads and um, making some different offers and doing things differently business-wise, 
Also, she met someone new and started being a different person in relationship than she'd ever been before. She said, you know, I, I really, now that I think of it, feel like I've never let anyone really see me in a relationship. Like I've always been pretending to be who I think I need to be for them or who they expect me to be. And so she started being more herself and creating a much deeper, more fulfilling relationship than she'd ever had. And within a few months of working together, she was hitting minimum $40,000 months. But by the end of our, our three month engagement, our, our, we were up for renewal right when Corona hit. And so she was worried about cash flow and said, I'm not going to renew yet. Let me see how I do on my own for a little bit. And was on track from the work we had done started hitting minimum $40,000 months within a year and a half was hitting hundred thousand dollar months said at the end of our Let's engagement, go. you know, maybe that million doesn't sound so bad after all. And last I heard she was hitting 115 plus thousand dollar months now yeah. on a regular basis yeah. and is in a great relationship now. So it, it's all amazing. It's amazing to me always how the, the beliefs we have these deep, sometimes deep subconscious beliefs that we don't even know are there are keeping us from the things we consciously say we want, but subconsciously we're trying to protect us and therefore not taking the steps we need to take towards it. No question. There are stories that we all tell ourselves. There are beliefs that we hold and we don't even realize that we have them. And a lot of it is how we grew up, right? We grew up yeah. in a certain neighborhood, a certain area. She saw two families. One had the money, but didn't have the family relationship. One seemingly had the family relationship, but the, the money was not there. And you really can have it all in today's world. But it starts by eliminating some of those you know, limiting beliefs we have. And I think one of the issues that we run into is we're busy and there's only maybe so much reading and, and podcasts and, and videos and courses and things that we can kind of go through. At some point, maybe we need to look at well, I can go through and I can learn all this, or I can kind of fast track at working with someone, working with someone who can kind of coach me up a little bit. Yes. What do you think are some of the, the reasons why if you can actually work with a coach specifically, you're going to be able to accelerate you know, your results a lot quicker than kind of doing it slowly like that? Yeah, I, th I think you're spot on. It does accelerate it so much. And I, I'm, I'm always... Um, it, it, Anyway, I, I've seen many, I've heard many people say, yeah, well, I don't, I don't have the money to invest into it yet, or I don't have the time to do that yet. And my thought in my own mind is always like, honey, you don't have the time or money not to, because, <laughs> because yeah. it does fast track it. We, the thing is we, we can't see, you know, we all have blind spots, just like a car has blind spots. Nothing's wrong with mm -hmm. the car. There's no flaw in the design. It's just an inherent part of the design that you can't see 360 all the time in the car. And it's the same in our life and in our business in our existence. Again, we, um, you know, we have these glasses on these lenses that we see the world through and it's so a part of who we are and how we think and what's always been for us. We don't even know we're wearing the glasses. And so to, to, to work with someone who can even just be able to call that out sometimes to say, Hey, you know, it kind of seems like maybe you're seeing it like this. And what are some other ways maybe you could see that or what else could be possible there? Um, or times when people, we will, we will vehemently argue for our limitations to try to, you know, protect ourselves, talk ourselves out of things. Um, I, I had, it's funny. I had one woman who, when she first came to work with me, um, we had had a discovery call, decided to work together. She wanted to start a, a health coaching business, had a huge passion for it. And, um, when we got on our first call, she said, okay, well, I was talking with my sister and she was pointing out that I'm really good with spreadsheets and stuff. And maybe I should start as a VA first. And then once I've got that going, then I can switch over to the health stuff. And I, I literally said to her, I was like, look, I'm like, you know, if you really want to do that, that's all good, but I'm not going to coach you for that. I won't work with you if that's what you're going to do. Cause I'm like, I know full well, your passion is the health track. And I said, and you're just up against fear right now. And she was like blown away that I said, I wouldn't work with her if she was going to be a VA. And she ended up, you know, we worked through and she saw the fear, but this, you know, to answer your question of why work with someone, even if you feel you've got a limit of the time or money, we don't see where fear stops us all the time, or it limits us, or it weighs us down. You know, sometimes I think of it almost like it's an anchor or something that we're, you know, it's not that we can't move at all, but we got to exert a whole lot of extra energy to move forward with that anchor dragging us down. And working with a coach can say, hey, did you know you got an anchor there? Maybe you want to like cut ties with that. And that'll give the opportunity to move more freely. And then we're able to, to, to go and get where we want to go and actually produce the results with the, the speed, the scale and the ease that we want to produce them with. 
You know, that story is, is very fascinating and interesting because I think it illustrates some other challenges that we run into that's part of our limiting beliefs and mindset. And that can be, you know, with those who we love and love us, our friends and family members and their experiences. This lady was willing to change her entire focus and, and just kind of put her dream life on hold pursuing that because her sister said, well, actually, you're kind of good at this. You should just do this instead. And I think there's a lot to be said about some anchors there. Yes. How do we identify maybe some of these other things that might be holding us back and, and actually be able to step back and, and realize that? Yeah, absolutely. One of the pieces of my, you know, the, the three main parts of my framework were those pillars we talked about of alignment, insight, and reinvention. But within insight and those human yeah, things, insight. those parts of our humanity yeah. that get in the way, um, part of that, that that I go into with my clients is environmental design. And so, you know, environment doesn't just mean your immediate, like a lot of us have heard things like keep your desk free from clutter or build some white space into your calendar, things like that. Those are pieces of our environment. Um, certainly things like the people in our life, who we surround ourselves with, um, family, you know, <laughs> as they say, you can't choose your family, but you know, we can, we can choose to choose them, whether we've, we've been given them or not. Um, but yeah, to, to be able to really recognize like, who are the people, where are the places, what are the things that inspire and lift you up and support you and propel you forward versus the things that maybe weigh you down or, um, also, you know, sometimes it comes from caring, especially with family members. It can come from a place of caring. They don't want to see you fail. They don't want to see you struggle. They don't want to see you go down a path and not succeed. Sure. If they see something that they think you're better at, or maybe is a safer way to go, they might try to talk you into that. But is that really aligned with what you want and with what your calling is? Not all the time. So um, I've actually just launched a mastermind for this very reason about environmental design. Cause I've, you know, I've worked one-on-one -on -one with people plenty, but I think there's a lot of value as well to being in a, a small group of people who've got your back and who are all yes, in it together yes, yes. and all looking out for each other and supporting each other and calling each other out when you start to play it safe or play small or to be there to, um, you know, cheer you on and lift you up when other people in your life might be saying, why are you doing this? This is crazy. Why don't you just go back to a regular job or things like that? That's huge. I mean, we, we, probably a lot of us have heard that uh, concept, that saying that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. And when you start spending more time with people who have bigger dreams and they want to live a bigger life, and that doesn't mean anything's limited. They want to have a great family. They want to have a multi-million dollar business. They want to have the freedom to travel around. They want to give their kids an epic life. And when you spend time with those people, now all of a sudden you begin to assimilate the way they think. Yes. And that's why mentorship is so important and why coaching and working with someone who is further along the path than you can really expedite and accelerate your results. Now, sometimes um, as entrepreneurs, we're building the business. We're working within the right framework. We've got the coach, the trainer, and yet we're not seeing the results as quickly as we want to at the speed or scale. What are some of the ways to, to break through, you know, those types of walls that we might run into? Yeah, there's, I mean, there are a number of things. Um, there are a number of things actually, but one of yeah. the, one of the processes that I, that I work through with clients, especially if it feels like they've been hitting a wall or a plateau for a while that they, um, I feel like oftentimes if, if we're saying we want something and it's not coming with that speed scale or ease that we want it to be coming with guaranteed there is always something, something that you're getting out of being where you are versus being where you say you want to be. So there's some kind of payoff for how it is now versus the perceived risk or cost or life-sucking consequence of where you say you want to get to. And so there's usually just a fear in there of, um, you know, it could have to do with how people will see you, which, you know, a lot of us consciously say, I don't care what people think about me. I'm going to go out and do what I want anyway. If you're human, yeah, you do care. We all care what people think about us. Cause again, we're still wired with caveman brains. We, we want to not get kicked out of the cave. Cause if we get kicked out of the cave, we're on our own to face the saber tooth tiger. Whereas in our group, we have some protection and strength and numbers. Straight so, um, yeah, so there's always some kind of fear there around, um, you know, whether it be looking bad or, or, uh, being wrong, failing, sometimes even succeeding can be, there can be a fear of success again, because of 
the the quote unquote consequences. You know, you think success is all good, but there could be things like, well, yeah, maybe you think now you're going to have to work a lot more hours or a lot harder or not have as much time with your family or, um, you know, all these different things that may come of it. So, um, yeah, there's a process that I work through with people. In fact, I go through it in one of the master classes that I teach where I kind of guide people through the process um, so they can look for themselves to see, okay, here's where I am. Here's where I say I want to be. What is it that's maybe missing between here and there? And then what's it going to take to now create a new possibility to move into that? Oh, I love that. That's great, Spencer, because so often we're working with a coach, we're working with a trainer, we have a mentor that's that's guiding us along the way, and they're asking us questions. And a lot of the times I think a lot of people think, oh, you're just going to give me the holy grail. You're going to give me the silver bowl. You're just going to tell me exactly what I need to do. And that's not how it works. <laughs> You're going to get the framework. You're going to get the guidance, but then you have to, you get to figure that out. You're in a unique situation. You're yes. in your business, your industry, your profession, and there are things that you learn, but you are going to figure that out. And that's, I think, one of the problems I had early on in business was I was always, well, what's the Holy Grail? What's, what's the marketing solution? But there's something unique that you figure out in your business with your team within your industry and profession, and you will be able to figure it out when you're working with the right people, but it's still going to be you. You're not yes. going to just get the, uh, the, the black and white answer. Oh, do this, do this. No, you're going to figure it out. And, and that's the good you'll be able to. And I think there's a lot of that too, where we're, we have a limiting belief. Well, I don't know how to do it. Someone needs to just tell me what to do. No, you're going to figure it out. And that's where I think this masterclass you're sharing is going to really pay dividends. And I think a lot of our listeners here, whether they're on the treadmill or they're driving, you know, to that uh, next appointment and thinking, wow, that this is good stuff. What is this class? How does this class work? How can I tap into it and, and unburden, unlock these limiting beliefs and things that are holding me back? Yeah. Excellent. So they can go to transformingmillions.com. That's millions with an S transformingmillions.com. And from that URL, you can sign up for there. It gives you a little more information of what it's about, but it goes through a little more in depth, each of these three pillars, um, including the first part gives you an opportunity to look for yourself at um, how aligned or not you are right now. And, you know, one of the things I didn't, I don't think I've really clarified yet on this episode, but a, a big belief of mine is that if something is out of alignment, you will sabotage it in some form or another, again, because it's protecting ourselves from those um, perceived consequences that may come from it. So, um, so you can kind of get a gauge on how aligned you are right now with your, who you are, what you're here for and what matters most. Um, we go a little more into some of these aspects of humanity that get in the way and how you can kind of see for yourself if there are some places where you're stopping yourself or holding yourself back. Um, and then getting into some of this tool of how to recognize what's between here and there, what's that payoff you're getting and what would it take to, to let that go? So you can create what you really want to create guys. So it's, it's transforming millions.com millions with an S and this masterclass is going to help you profitably and sustainably make world changing impact. There's three specific things. What must be aligned to create a sustainable, fulfilling path to move more impact, money, freedom, and fulfillment and why it may sometimes feel like it's not enough. Number two, the human trap that is unknowingly creating your upper limits, limiting your earnings, business evolution, general fulfillment, maybe the people around you. And number three, why continuous reinvention is essential to make the full impact you're here to make. Let's, let's uh, end this uh, episode on reinvention. Number three here, because sometimes we see some success and at some point there's got to be a reinvention. There's got to be another step. I always think of you know, the career of Madonna, who, boy, <laughs> yes. that lady was always reinventing herself <laughs> and always yes. decade to decade doing something and taking it to the next level. I thought that was a good example of it. But tell us a little bit more about reinvention, because I think that's kind of a step where we we start to run into walls. And, and again, there's yeah. got to be some reinvention. Yeah. You know, you, you start talking about Madonna reinventing, and I'm thinking some people might be listening going, wait, do I have to go make out with Christina Aguilera now? So <laughs> 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 no, not yet. So, <laughs> I mean, you can if you want to, if you're able to. So, um, yeah, so reinvention. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a lot of what is behind reinvention for me when I speak to it that way is that what's gotten you where you are is very likely not what's going to be able to get you to the next step. If it was, you'd already be there. 
So being yes. who you've been and doing what you've done has gotten you where you are, which I'm sure is fabulous and great and magnificent, nothing wrong with it. But we have this innate yearning to, to be stepping into more and creating more. I mean, you look at anything in nature even, and it's always growing and expanding. And we as humans are always growing and expanding and wanting more. And, um, and so with that, it's, it's, a lot of really, to me, reinvention is very much about letting go of what's not you. What's, you know, some of those things where we've been keeping ourselves safe and protecting ourselves to get where we really want to be next. And, and by that, I mean, um, you know, we all take on an identity of sorts, like the smart one, the successful one, the fun one, the, um, the super mm -hmm. achieving one. But yeah. the thing is like, we have to be that, or at least it feels to our human fear and needs. Like we have to be that. And there's this, um, subconscious fear of, well, if I'm not that, then what would happen? You know, everything would kind of fall to pieces or who would I be without that? And yet the thing is like a super achiever has to always achieve. The smart one has to always be right and can't fail. And so with that, that's sometimes where we put those limits on ourselves. Like if I have to be right and can't fail, I'm going to be less likely to take certain risks because I might fail with those risks. So, um, so yeah, so reinvention, I think it's a constant process of really looking at what do I, what do I want next? What am I being called to next? And who do I need to be, or who do I need to become? What do I need to do differently to get there? Because if I, if, if being and doing what I've been doing would work, then I'd have it, but I don't. So what's next? Mm, well said, well said. Well, guys, a lot of value bombs that Spencer has dropped on you today. As always, at the end of these podcasts, we want to encourage you not to passively listen and learn and be entertained and say, wow, that's a cool concept. Those are good things. That's, you know, three pillars that would really help me in my business. We want you to take action. So again, if you haven't gone to transformingmillions.com, please do register for this free game-changing, life-changing class. Again, if you want to succeed, it's all about hanging around the right people who have already done it on that level. And if you do that, success can be yours in all areas of life. No limiting actions here. Just because you have to work hard and succeed in business doesn't mean you can't have a great family and a great life and a great lifestyle. It's just all about being very purposeful and deliberate in the way you plan out that life. Well, Spencer, thank you so much for being a guest on the podcast. The last word is yours in terms of the actions that people should take um, right now from where they're at. What's the next step for them? What's the one thing they can do today um, you know, in addition to attending your masterclass, that's going to move the needle. Yes, of course. In addition to the masterclass. So, um, yeah, you know, give some, give some thought even right now, as you're, as we're closing out this of what, what is the one thing you want in the next six months? And are you being the person and doing the things that are going to get you there? And I'm going to bet most people on some level will have something to say, mm, maybe I'm not fully doing it or fully going after it. Take a look at what that is that you want and commit to one thing that you can start to put in place this week, whether it be new ways of being, maybe taking risks you haven't taken before or showing up differently or um, doing something you've been afraid of doing. Maybe you've been thinking, God, I really should start a TikTok. I've been hearing great things about that. I should get mm. out on TikTok. Yes. Go make a TikTok yes. video this week. If there's something that's, that's how I'll sum this up is to say, if there's something you've been afraid of doing that, you know, would be a game changer. And there's just been some fear around doing it, go do it. Oh, that is so good. I'm uh, going to do that today. That's exactly what I needed to hear. <laughs> awesome. All right, Spencer. Well, thank you so much for being a guest. Value Bombs. And guys, it's transformingmillions.com. Take action. Go check it out. And next time we will see you on the Seven Figures Club podcast as you join that club and continue to grow. Thanks so much for being a, a, a guest. And thank you to the audience for listening and taking action. And we'll see you guys next time. Are you looking for more seven-figure secrets, content, or even how you can launch your own recession-proof business? Then check out sevenfigures.com. That's the digit seven, F-I-G-U-R-E-S.com, where we share more videos, stories, strategies, funding solutions, entrepreneurial education, and even the secret business type that's recession-proof. Thank you for listening, and if you're finding value in our podcast, please give us a five-star and invite others to join the club.